Uh, this morning I want to share with you about uh, the grace coming from God. Um, first of all, I want to read the book of Genesis chapter 6 uh, to find out what kind of grace Noah found out from the eyes of God. Yeah, chapter 6, verse 1 through verse 8, I'll read it for you. And it came to pass, when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of man, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit, shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that uh, wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them, but nor found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Can you imagine when Noah heard from God? God will destroy all men and women, including beasts and fowls, creeping things from the face of the earth. If you had heard this kind of message from God, how you might feel about that? The Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. What that means? Yeah, nor might have seek, seek grace from God. At this point, God said to Noah again, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with the violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, when Noah found out the grace in the eyes of God, and he must have begged or asked, you know, the grace from God, then God decided to save him from the judgment of the flood. And God said to him, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without, with pitch, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in the cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With the lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all the flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Yeah, in the obedience to God's gracious word, Noah was able to build an ark 
for 120 years to save himself and his family from the judgment of the flood. He preached the word of God's righteousness in the midst of suffering persecution to those who did not know this and continued to eat and drink and marry and to the flesh, fleshly work he would have preached them to seek grace in God's eyes as him. The Apostle Peter testified of Noah that he was a preacher of righteousness. And he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flaws upon the world of the ungodly. Apostle Peter testified that God would once again judge the world by fire, not by water, not by flood, but by fire, as it was in Noah's day. He said, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? But since the father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly man, but beloved. He not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count the slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. In the days of Noah, I guess, you know, at least, you know, at the time the population of the earth traveled more than 100 million people. That's, I guess, a thousand years, you know. What of a situation these days, comparing the days of Noah? Can you imagine? I think, you know, more wicked, more evil than the time of Noah. At least, at least at the time, there is no transient of sexes. No homosex kind of things. Even those two kinds of things, you know, days of Noah are much better than these days. What about America? As of March 29, the President of, uh, President of America, you know, proclaimed the day of transient. Can you imagine? It's never happened in time of Noah, never happened in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. At the time of Noah, God repented that he just had created men and women. What about these days? You can imagine how God is feeling towards the world. God the Creator who spoke to the ancient man Noah made his only begotten son who was God the Word in the beginning 2,000 years ago in the name of Jesus and appeared before his chosen 
people of Israel. John the Baptist testified about him as full of grace and truth. He said, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we held his glory, the glory as of only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So how you can find the grace in the eyes of God in the wicked days. How you can find the grace in the eyes of God. Jesus was full of grace and truth. What is truth? The words of God. If you like, you can open the words of God. It's called the Bible. You can see the grace in the eyes of God through the words of the truth. If you like to receive the grace, you can do that. Repent your sin and ask grace from God to avoid you know, coming judgment by fire. Just as God saved Noah, uh, who found the grace in his eyes from the coming judgment of the flood, God wanted to save those who sought grace in the eyes of Jesus Christ, from the judgment of fire, Jesus proclaimed the gospel of grace to all the world by his own mouth. And Jesus said, okay, listen to this. For God so loved the world. You know this, right? John 3, 16. Everybody knows that. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, you can find out, you know, very important message from God. Whosoever believe in him should not perish. That means what? Should not perish by the judgment fire coming in near future. Yeah, John 3.16. Is a fearful was a God. At the same time, the grace, grace of God in the gospel of Christ. What is the grace in Jesus Christ? He shed his blood. He became a man. In the beginning, he was a word. The word of, he was God. He became a man. He had to share his blood and water, you know, to cleanse all the sins inside of human heart, conscience. If you need grace, you've got to believe in him, receive him as a Lord and Savior. If not, no exception. Remember, only know one person, his family. Only one person his family saved, you know, at the time, out of 100 million people. Now, 7.8 billion people. 7.8 billion people. You gotta be same as Noah. If not, shall perish. That's the word of God, not, not my word. Also Jesus said, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That means to judge the, judge the world by fire, right? But that the world through him might be saved. Might be saved. That's why Apostle Paul testified that those who believe in the grace that God gave through him, that he bled to death on the cross, to be buried and resurrected on the third day, to take away his sins of the world, the sins of the world, and all the sins and conscience of man by grace alone, souls will be saved and saved from the day of wrath, the great tribulation. Apostle Paul said, very important message, for by grace, for by grace, what? The grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. By grace are ye saved 
through faith and then not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Just one, just one grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's all, not by work, anything. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Very important message. So Apostle Paul saved a message warning that another gospel would emerge that would change the gospel of salvation by exclusive grace testified by the blood of Jesus Christ. He just sent a sent epistle to the church of Galatians. I marveled that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Accursed. Unfortunately, many other Gospels is now preached by the preachers. Jesus rebuked those who preach the different Gospel as lawless walkers. He said, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that walk in equity. Yeah, it's a fearful message of the Lord. He also spoke to the Jews on that day who did not believe in the gospel of grace, the way of life in the Jesus Christ, but believed in a different gospel. Jesus said, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I shall unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up and hath to shut to the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye walkers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing, gnashing of teeth, when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. I bless all of you to understand what is the grace of God, grace of Jesus Christ, and what is another gospel, other gospels. 
and how God, how Jesus blamed for those who preach other gospels. It's very important. When you stand before Jesus, and if Jesus say to you, I don't know you, how are you going to feel at the time? That's why now is the time for everyone to repent their sins. I believe I just bless all of you to be able to stand before Jesus in righteous way. Amen.